Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 96. Starting from today and for the next five days, 96 through 100, we'll deal with units of measurements. We'll learn how to convert quickly and efficiently from English system and from English system to metric system and vice versa. We're not going to get into too much detail, we're just going to learn the basics so that it allows us to do quick approximation as I said. We're not going to worry about the exact measurements. This is for the benefit of the of the people in the US where as you know the rest of the world has moved on with the metric system but the US is still stuck with the English system and therefore sometimes we have difficulty converting from, from, from English uh, units of measurements to metric units of measurements. So you have to have some idea, some rough idea as to what you're dealing with. Let's begin. First thing first, we have to first take care of the three terms that appear all the time when you're dealing with metric system. The very first one we have to understand is kilo. Kilo simply means means times times 1000 or 10 raised to 3. For example, when we talk about a kilometer, a kilometer is exactly what it says. It means 1000 meter. Kilometer is 1000 meter just like what it says or if you have a kilogram kilogram again it, it should not be it's one word kilogram again it's exactly what it says kilo means 1000 gram 1000 a gram the only thing is that when most people are, are, are discussing the notion of kilograms listen very carefully if you're not familiar with it uh, because of la out of laziness, people don't actually say kilogram. They will not tell you that I weigh 70 kilogram. They will simply say I weigh 70 kilo and they leave out the word gram. So, but you have to understand from the context that kilo, it means times 1000, but when they say I weigh, I weigh 70, uh, 70 kilos or this package weighs 2 kilos, you have to understand that what they are talking about is kilogram, 2000 gram. Let's, go, let's keep on going. The next concept you have to understand is centi. Centi means one hundredth. One hundredth. For example, a centi a centimeter is so called because centimeter is simply a hundredth of a meter. A centimeter is one hundredth of a meter. That's why it's called centimeter. Centimeter is 100 or centi liter. Although centiliter is not a very common term, but that's exactly what, it's, what it means. What it says, it means 100 of a liter. 100 of a liter. A centiliter is 100 of a liter. Let's do one more. The last concept that we're going to come across very often is milli. Milli means one thousand. One. One thousand. One thousand. A milliliter. Milliliter is exactly what it says. Milliliter means a thousandth of a liter. A thousand of a liter. A milli. A milligram. Now that we know what milli means, we know now, we now realize a milligram is actually a very small amount. A milligram is a thousandth of a gram, is one thousandth of a gram. Millimeter, again, a millimeter, millimeter is exactly what it says, a millimeter is a thousandth of a meter, is one thousandth of a meter. So now the question is, if milligram is a thousandth of a gram, listen very carefully, if a milligram is a thousandth of a gram and it takes 1000 grams to make 1 kilogram, how many milligram in a kilogram? And the answer is, a kilogram is made up of a million, a million milligram. 10 raised to 6 milligram, 10 raised to 6 milligram will make a kilogram. Same thing with millimeter. A millimeter is one thousandth of a meter. Is a one thousandth of a meter we know it takes a thousand meter to make a one kilometer. Therefore one kilometer must be ten raised to six millimeter. Millimeter. One 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 million 
one million millimeter make a kilometer. Enough of that, let's get going. Now we're going to do some conversion, we're going to learn some basic stuff as I said, we're going to pick up some speed, okay? Let's begin with distance, let's begin with, we'll do three things, distance, weight and finally the volume, the liquid. First we do the distance. Especially if you're going to travel outside the country, you have to have some basic idea as to what a mile is, because the rest of the world does not go by the mile. Distance. One inch is approximately two and a half centimeter. That's all it is. You don't have to, you don't have to go gung ho. You don't have to worry about the precision. You don't have to worry about the exact measurement. Approximately two and a half inches will get you through. Do you understand? Therefore, two inches is about five centimeters. That's all it is. One yard, and since one centimeter is two and a half centimeter, let's continue this. Actually, we're going to continue this topic. Before I go into the next one, I change my mind. We're going to continue it here. If one inch is approximately two and a half centimeter, watch what happens. Therefore, if you would multiply both sides by four, if you were to multiply both sides by four, four inches should be approximately four times two and a half. Four times two and a half. Four times two is eight, and four times half is two which means four inches, four inches is approximately 10 centimeter. It's approximately 10 centimeter. We're not quite done yet. We're not quite done yet. The question is, if 10 centimeters make four inches, if 10 centimeters make, make four inches, listen very carefully, then how much does one centimeter equal? How much, how much is one centimeter in inches? It's very simple. Divide both sides by 10. If we divide both sides by 10, now we have 10 divided by 10, which is 1, which means 1 centimeter approximately equals 0.4 inches, or if you like, 2 fifths of an inch. Once 1 centimeter, let's put it here. So that implies, that in fact, that in turn implies that 1 centimeter approximately equals 0.4 inch, not half an inch, 0.4 inch. Let's carry on. Let's talk about 1 yard. One yard is approximately nine tenth of a meter, and that's all you have to worry about. Don't 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 make it too complicated. As I said, just keep it simple. And that in turn implies I'm not going to go to the, to the derivation one more time. That in turn implies that one one meter is about one yard and three inches. But I myself, when I'm doing the calculation, if I had to do a quick conversion, I'm too lazy, out of laziness, it actually gets you through a long way. Just approximate, very rough approximation is that a yard is about a meter. Even though we know now that a yard plus three more inches will be about a, about a meter. So if you go around saying that a yard is about a meter, you're off by three inches. Just keep that in mind, that's all. Or if you like, a meter is about, about 39 inches. Let's carry on. Let's carry on then. How about a mile? A mile is about 1.6 kilometer. A mile is about 1.6 kilometer. And if you like, we can do the same derivation one more time. One mile is approximately 1.6 kilometer. If you want to multiply both sides by 10, multiply that side by 10, multiply that side by 10, 1.6 kilometer. times 10, 1.6 times 10 is 16, 16 kilometer is approximately 10 miles, okay, stay with me in this story, and therefore if you divide both sides by 16, if you divide both sides by 16, 16 divided by 16 is 1, so 1 kilometer, 1 kilometer is approximately 10 divided by 16, which is same as 5 8, 5 8 of a mile. One, one kilometer is approximately five-eighths of a mile, or if you like, about 0.6 miles. As I said, don't make too much fuss about it. So that takes care of the distance. Let's move on to the weight. Those are, those are the three things we have to remember. Those are the only three things you have to worry about, and that will be more than sufficient to get you where you want to go. 
both literally and metaphorically. Let's talk about the weeds. One kilogram is about 2.2 pounds. About 2.2 pounds. Not two pounds. One kilogram is not two pounds. If one kilogram if one kilogram were two pounds, then one pound would be half a kilogram. One pound is not half a kilogram. One pound is a little bit less than half a kilogram because it takes 2.2 pounds to make one kilo. But if you like, if you like, if you if you out of laziness, if you end up saying that one 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 pound is approximately half a kilo, that's okay. Nobody's going to come and arrest you. It's a very rough. It's a very rough approximation. One pound is approximately half a kilo. Even though we know it's 2.2, not 2. One ounce is about 28 grams. One ounce is about 28 grams. That's it. That was, the, that was about the weight. Now we're going to move on to the volume. Let's do the volume on the top. For liquids, one liter, one liter is approximately one quart. Is approximately one quart, and since we know, since we know that four quarts make a gallon, since we know that four quarts make a gallon, therefore that implies that approximately four liter equal one gallon. Approximately four liter equals one gallon. If you want to, if you want to be a little bit more precise, then then if you this is a little bit more precise, three and seven eight, three and seven eight liter. The symbol for liter, the symbol for liter is capital L. Three and three and seven eight liter equals one gallon. Approximately equals one gallon. Although this might be precise, I'm not sure. This might be exist. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's still precise or approximate, but 3 and 7 8 is actually pretty damn close to the real thing Or maybe it is a real thing as I said, but I don't I mean I, when I'm dealing with it don't, I don't make it too complicated Just say to yourself that one gallon is about a quarter of a gallon uh, One gallon is about one gallon is a, a one liter rather one liter is about a quarter of a gallon because it takes four liters It takes four liters to make a gallon So when you fill up your tank when you put in 10 gallons of gasoline in your in your car, 10 gallons of gasoline in your car, in other parts of the world, you'll have to buy 40 liters. And finally, one ounce, what we what we call one ounce, is approximately 30 milliliter. That's it. That's all there is. And that will be enough for us. That will be more than enough for us to do the problems that we're going to do. Starting from today, we're going to do four days we're going to spend. Uh, on, on where we will do some problems where we'll convert one unit of measurement to the other from metric to English and, and vice versa on day number 97, 98, 99, 100. Alright? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.